This demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock software and accompanying plugins. It is not a recommendation to buy or sell exchange traded instruments, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Thomson Reuters shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. I want to talk just a few minutes about the software, uh, where we're from, kind of our heritage. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, I just want you to know that we're a company that's been in business since 1982. We were purchased by Reuters in 1995. Uh, we have a very good product called Quote Center, which does real-time data. It's been a fantastic product. Uh, it's uh, basically sold more than we ever expected and continues to do very, very well. We've sold a lot of software during the last 20 years. My, my point in showing this slide to you isn't to like get you impressed with the software. I really want you to understand that we've been in a, a software company that's been in business for a very long time. What I want to do is I want to get right into the software. So let's go ahead and move on. Today I'm going to actually do a, a training on um, the RMO methodology. Now I'm willing to go ahead and put myself out on a limb tonight and say, why don't you give me some stock symbols that you're interested in? Let's take a look at the stocks that you're looking at. We'll take a look and see if RMO is going to work well on that particular stocks or those particular markets that you're interested in. We can do Australian stocks, we can do Canadian stocks, we can do just about anything that you want. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to be doing this, this methodology which is included with Metastock and we're going to be doing it on stocks that you provide. Okay? I do want you to understand that what I'm showing today is a very, very small part of Metastock. Metastock is a very, very functional application. It's been rated number one the last 19 years in a row. We, uh, it allows you to do system testing, which allows you to evaluate and see exactly on a chart um, or using historical data what methods might work. We're just talking about one method. Uh, we're not going to talk a lot about scanning. We might cover it briefly depending on how fast or how slow I go. But scanning is an incredibly powerful tool that allows you to really go through an entire market, like the, the Australia market or the U.S. market, and allows you to find uh, very, very quickly stocks that you should be looking at tomorrow or futures that you should be looking at tomorrow. We're not going to be talking a lot about the expert advisor, but that's a very, very good tool for helping you learn about the markets. And we're not going to be talking a lot about Quote Center, which is our real-time data product. And um, if you know much about Thomson Reuters, it's going to be something that uh, might be of some interest to you. It basically offers all of their news, their fundamentals, their real-time screening, their market watch. It's a great, great little product. Right now what we're going to do is we're going to get somewhat myopic. We're going to talk about just a very, very specific part of the program. Okay, so let's move on. Here's, a, here's a, a, the Reuters office. Okay. One thing that I do want to point out, and my graphic doesn't seem to be going through, but we've actually been a software company uh, that's been rated here in the United States by Stocks and Commodities Magazine 20, 19 years in a row best software in its price category. Our real-time version of Metastock has been rated number one in its price category for nine years in a row. It's a tool. We consider it a toolbox. Now, what I mean by that is very, very specific. You can use a tool, and if you have the appropriate tool to do the job, it's going to do a couple things for you. It's going to make it easier for you to do your analysis. It's going to make it more effective so that you do analysis more effectively and it's going to provide the information that you need. I'm in the process of building a house here in uh, Northern California. Uh, I live outside of San Jose. I guarantee that I'm going to be hiring people that have the expertise and the skill and also the tools that are necessary to build this house for you. I would argue, and I hope you see my point today as we get into the software, but I would argue that not having the Metastock tool is actually more expensive than having it. In other words, the 
opportunity costs that you lose by not being able to do the things Metastock will do for you in your trading will cost you far more than the little price that you'll pay to actually own the software. Let's go ahead and get into the lesson though. We're going to talk, start to talk a little bit about RMO. And to understand what RMO is, we need to understand that it's a trend following system. Now I've got the definition of trend up on a chart, but it's almost a cliche in the market. Uh, Steve Nissan, somebody that I have a tremendous amount of respect for, uh, says all the time, talks about his Japanese proverb that a rising toad is going to lift all boats. You'll hear it all the time when you go to these classes. The trend is your friend. The uh, trade with the trend, etc., etc., etc. It's almost a cliche. However, it's something that's very, very specific. What, I, what I'm going to show you today is how to look at a stock and identify the trend of that stock. And so it's important for us to understand what a trend is in a stock. Basically, we want to get really, really not subjective, but objective about looking at a stock. If a stock or an instrument that we want to trade is going up, we want to trade into that strength. And that's a big, the big part of what we're going to be doing today. We also have a, a definition of an oscillator. This may be a term that you're unfamiliar with. An oscillator is usually, well, the definition's right here, but allows you to look for overbought and oversold conditions. The RMO stands for Rahul Mohindar Oscillator, and so a lot of it is going to be based on looking at the stock to see if it's bullish or bearish, seeing what this oscillator is going to do. I want to talk just a little bit about Rahul uh, Mohindar. Uh, Rahul is actually somebody I found out is in our office in Salt Lake City today which I wish I was there to see him because I usually was up until this year. I've always been in Salt Lake City. Now I've moved to San Jose. So, uh, But Rahul Mo, uh, is actually one of our best dealers in the world. Um, he's uh, located in India, and he does a lot of teaching uh, as part of his profession. He contributes to CNBC and CNN India. We get RMO um, because a few years ago he actually came into our office and we were asking him, well, how are you such a good dealer? What are you doing that we can teach some of our other dealers to do? And he said, well, when I started, there was a big problem with piracy. So what I did is I simplified my methods, the things that I use to trade, and I put them in such a way, format that I show my customers how to use them. They go ahead and implement those in their trading. I give them these uh, methods and these, uh, these things for free. But what I require from them is I require that they purchase a legitimate legal lock copy of Metastock. So we're all traders in Salt Lake City. We got very, very interested to see how he actually traded. And so we took a very close um, look at the methodologies. We looked at a lot of different stock charts with them. Bottom line is um, we decided that we wanted to purchase these and make them available to all of our Metastock customers. So this is where the methodology comes from. Personally, this is a presentation I'll probably do about six times this month. I've done it in Egypt, I've done it in Dubai, I've done it in Singapore, I've done it pretty much everywhere you can think of. Generally what I do is I come in and I say give me some stock symbols. We look at the stocks in Metastock, I show how to do the rules in Metastock, and I'll tell you it doesn't work every time, but it will work about three out of four in my experience. Okay, So today, in just a minute or two, Start thinking of some symbols you want to look at. Go ahead and get them typed in there, and we'll take a look at them. Okay? But first, we're going to lay some foundation for the rules. Okay? Here's what I like about RMO. Okay? And here's why I show it so much as well. It's easy. Number one, very, very simple to use. Uh, as long as you understand how to read the indicators, you should be able to implement in your trading. Okay? So it's duplicatable. It's not subjective. In other words, uh, and I, when I do this in a live presentation, I say, tell me if this looks bullish or bearish to you based on this rule. And every, every, every time, somebody can tell me exactly whether it's bullish or bearish. They can tell me exactly where they'd put a stop, exactly where they'd enter into it. It works on a lot of different time frames. Uh, we're going to use daily charts today. But if you're a real-time trader or an intraday trader, you can put it on 60-minute charts or 15-minute charts. You could use it on weekly. It works on a lot of different time frames. 
it works on a lot of different instruments. And I can say that from experience because I've shown this thing in Egypt and it works on Egyptian stocks. I've shown it in Australia, it works on Australian stocks. In fact, um, we had a users conference this year and we talked to a guy that's been extremely successful. Uh, and I don't know that I necessarily want to say exactly how successful he is because that gets a little promissory. But let's just say that he's turned uh, an account very, very profitably in not very much time. And it's simple. And my goal for you, I mean, my goal is obvious. I want to get you to try our software. Okay? If I can show you something that's easy, that's 100% objective, not rule-based, or 100% objective and rule-based, then it's going to be something that you can open up, you can install your Metastock software with, and if it helps you make money, then you're going to continue to subscribe to our software and our services indefinitely. Okay? Let's go ahead and get started with the rules. The first step that we're going to do is we're going to identify the primary and prevailing trend on, a, on the stocks. And in a second, we're going to go into Metastock. We're going to transfer it in, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay? Let's go ahead and do that. Give me a second. I'm going to change your view. Uh, it's going to change. It'll go blank for a minute. Don't get distracted. Now, if I did that right, and I'm going to lean on you guys to let me know if that looks right, you should be able to see a, a, a chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. In this case, it's actually the diamond. But you should be able to see a chart of the diamond, who I think we can all agree has kind of been going down a little bit lately. Okay. If you guys have one thing, too, that I want to point out before we actually go much further, I usually try and say this at the first of my class and not halfway through, but if you have questions, go ahead and type them up. Um, if you have seen me present live, I usually pace all over the place. I'm a very, very engaged and active speaker. So if I don't see your question, it, do it doesn't mean that I was ignoring you. <laughs> it means I didn't see it. Ask it again. Okay? I'll do my best to answer the questions, especially as now we get into the rules. It's important that you understand how those rules operate and how they work. Now let's look at and see if some of you guys have submitted some symbols to look at. And I'll show you how to open them up. Uh, there's SVW. Bruce, I'm hoping that's a U.S. stock or maybe an Australian stock. Maybe you could tell me. DTS and MMS. Let me just start writing down this. If it, I need to know country and symbol because we, uh, we have, I'm happy to look at anything you want. I just need to know where I can find it in the software. David. Oh, David. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and make you a um, uh, host again. Okay, DTS. There we go. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> it's good to have you back. Glad you could join us. We'll do, okay, SSO is a USA ETF. And uh, I just want to make sure, I know we have a lot of MMM, US. I know we have a lot of, okay, I'm making decisions here. An AUSVW. Let's go ahead and I'll show you how to open these up. I've got the ones I'm going to use. And if we have time, we'll look at a couple more. But we probably are not going to have time. Uh, so, the ones that we're going to go through are SSO, MMM, and SVW. Okay, let's go ahead and open those up. I've, uh, what I want to do is, I, uh, in order to open those up, I'm going to go ahead and close down my Dow chart here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit File Open. Now, when you, if you're new to Metastock, I'm just going to, my goal isn't to do training on Metastock. We've got full resources available for you for training on Metastock. But I'm going to show you a little bit in terms of how to at least get to where you, you want to go if you want to do some RMO analysis. So right here we have uh, the open dialog box. Uh, history just keeps track of the stuff that you've looked at before. Local data, if you download data, which is recommended if you want to do scanning, it's going to be listed all right here. Favorites is really cool. It allows me to keep track of stocks that might be in my portfolio or stocks that I might be watching, stocks that I might want to watch, that kind of stuff. The majority of the work that you will do, especially as a new uh, customer of Metastock, is going to be right here in Quote Center. Right here, I can set the periodicity. If I wanted to, I've got Metastock Pro. I could go to 30 minutes or 20 minutes or hourly. But I'm going to set that to daily. Okay, We're going to look at primarily daily charts. Let's go ahead and open up some charts. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, the first one I said we would open up is a, with the real-time version of Metastock, I'll just do U.S. semicolon, and we'll do SSO, which is ProShares Ultra S&P 500. 
I'm going to separate these symbols with a column. Now you'll notice that if you don't know what the symbols are, I'll point this out, you've got directories up here. So for example, if you wanted to go in and find a stock in Asia, for example, you could click on Asia, that would give you down to the Australian Stock Exchange or the Tokyo. I know we have a, a person from Singapore in here. Here you go, Alan. You could go into the Singapore Exchange, whatever exchange that you want, and then you'll be able to see them listed either by name or by symbol. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in the symbol, and it, we had US triple M, and we had, and I'm just going to put in a comma, US semicolon SVW. Okay, so I've got three stocks in here that we're going to look at. And let's go ahead and open them up. It's that simple. It'll take a second for the data lo to load. It doesn't usually take quite so long. Actually, that Bank of America stock looks a little odd. Uh, well, I can tell you, I probably, oops. Did I have that symbol right? Was it SVW? Let's see. I can look at SVW. I think SVW Let's was try a that again. Australian stock for that. Seven group holdings. Okay, we'll try. Let's open up the right one because I wouldn't trade what, what I was looking at just now. <laughs> okay, that looks a lot better. Okay, all right. So I've got the charts open. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just. I, I like it this way better. Uh, we'll take a look at. Um, let's start with SVU. It's from Australia, and I want to show you how to apply all the indicators and the studies and the techniques. All you do to the to do that is I'm just going to right click on my open chart. I'm going to click on apply template. I'm going to go to the very bottom of my list and it's called RMO trade model. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click on open and that's going to load all the indicators that we're going to be using as part of the indicator as part of what we're doing right now. Okay. Now remember we're on step number one of our three step process. Okay. And that step number one is we're going to identify the primary and prevailing trend. Okay. To do that, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here, we're going to use uh, actually the Rahul Mohindar oscillator. Okay. So I'm going to make this a full screen indicator. I'm going to draw a line right here on zero. And uh, David, I'm going to pick on you a little bit uh, since you're back and since you jumped out and left us for yeah. a minute. But uh, I have a very, very specific question for you. I want you to look at the very last day of this chart, and I want you to tell me if this uh, if this indicator is above zero or if it's below zero. Below zero. Great. You, good job, David. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. That's what we need to do to analyze the long-term trend if we're using RMO. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this last indicator. If it's below zero, we're going to say that we are in a bearish zone. And I guarantee almost everything that I've looked at recently, with the exception of gold, right now is in this bearish zone. Okay. Now, if a stock is going down, and this will be for the audience, I'll be I'm done picking on David for now, but this will be for the audience. If the stock is weak, if the stock is going down, what do we want to look to do with a weak stock that we think is going to continue to go down? We want to look. Yeah, that's right. We want to. Look, we don't. We certainly, as heck, do not want to buy it. We want to look for opportunities to go short. We want to sell into weakness and buy into strength. We want to trade with the direction of the overall trend. Okay. So when we say we're in a bearish zone, what we're going to do is we're going to establish some rules around that. In a bearish zone, we are not allowed to go long. Okay. We are allowed to short, and we're not going to use this indicator as a trigger. Okay. And what I mean by that is right here, we went from bullish to bearish right here. That's where that happened. Just because that drops down below zero, that's not enough information for us to say that we're going to take a short position. It tells us that we're now long term in a bearish zone and that we will start to not look at long positions, but we will start to look at short positions, okay? But it's never going to be a trigger that we're going to use to get Can in. Can I ask a hard question, Jeff? I'm curious, um, do you know okay. any of the now, math the same, behind how that's calculated? Absolutely. Like um, the indicator that we're looking at? Well, you can ask that question, and the, the answer is that I do know, um, but I uh, it, we would consider it a proprietary indicator for Metastock. And I, I'm not allowed to give out the actual math. 
Um, it was part of our agreement with Rahul. So there's your answer. It wasn't too tough of a question. The answer is, yeah, I know all about it, but I, I won't be able to tell you. We wouldn't be able to disclose it. The real takeaway here is the idea of if someone's designing a trading system okay. is to make sure that they identify what the underlying trend is, and it's not necessarily a trigger, but regardless of what trading system they're working with, make sure that you do trend analysis as part of and that's absolutely true. And, and another takeaway that I want to make sure is very, very clear is this is not necessarily a method that I am endorsing, although the, the whole class is built around it and I've endorsed it many, many times right now. I'm not going to be the person that sits up here and tells you, you should buy Metastock tomorrow and start trading the next day with RMO. That's certainly not the takeaway that I would want to give you. What I do want to do is I want you to understand how this methodology works. It's something that I, I personally use, and if it works well for you, great. If not, there's a bunch of other systems in Metastock that might work well for you. Um, so it's a very, very good methodology. I can endorse it in so much as you should look at it to see if it would work well with what your goals are as a trader. I put the rules up here while we were talking about that for the bullish zone as well. Again, we're allowed to go long. We're not allowed to go short, and it's not a trigger. Okay. So now I know um, already that my bias is going to be bearish. I'm not allowed to go long. I know that. I also know that I'm looking for short positions. And I know that I may or may not be in, in there. That's step number one. Okay, so we've identified that bias or that trend in the market. I want to show one other thing too. Yeah, well, I've got the vertical lines on the chart. Right here, you notice where we've changed from zero to one. We've actually put a trend ribbon on the bottom of your chart that says you're in a bullish zone or you're in a bearish zone. Uh, and so you can look at the indicator or you can look at the zone indication on the bottom of the chart, and that should give you a pretty clear idea of what direction um, the mar this particular stock is headed in. Now, I know there's been some questions that have come in, so let me, at this point, it's a pretty good time to actually break and take a look at those. Uh, if you guys have any questions to uh, George to ask, what's the difference between the template and the expert? George, that's a very good question. Uh, the, the difference is if you just applied the expert, you'd get the ribbon and you get the buy and sell signals and you get the highlighting that we'll talk about in step two, but you wouldn't get the additional indicators. When you apply the template, it's going to apply the expert and attach the expert, but also attach all of the indicators that go along with this system and this methodology. Okay, all right, cool. Let's go ahead and go to step number two. So I'm going to switch back into the presentation and we're going to go to step, okay, again, just to recap, if you're in a bullish zone, you're allowed to buy, you're not allowed to sell short, and it's not a trigger to enter. Step two, we're going to identify the shorter term trend or the basically the short-term trend on the, in the stock, okay? Uh, and to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the software. See, we don't send much time in PowerPoint around here. Okay, you should be able to see the uh, screen again. We're going to talk a little bit about step number two, short-term trend. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. A short-term trend, uh, we're going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this indicator off the chart for now. We're going to go ahead and make this a full screen chart, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically, we're going to be looking at the indicator labeled short-term trend or swing trend two, <laughs> okay? So I'm going to basically do the same analysis here. I'm going to basically put the, the thing in zero line. And I want you guys to ignore the blue line, which I'm going to change to a line real quick. Ignore the line. Okay, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the swing trade two indicator. Okay, I believe the math on swing trade two is very, very similar to the math on the RMO. I believe that because it looks very similar in terms of the way that it moves. Uh, I also think it looks at a lot shorter of a time frame than the RMO, and I believe that because it doesn't take as long to start calculating in Metastock. Okay, we also read it the same way. 
So in other words, we've looked at the long-term trend. Now we're going to look at the short-term trend. Okay, And I'm going to look at the blast value of the chart. I won't pick on David for this time, but if it's below zero, I'm going to say that short-term we are in a bullish up. Okay, so Or a bearish on. Sorry. I'm going to copy this because it makes it easier to cheat. Paste. Okay, now I don't have to type as much. Let's go back here and I'll type the other rules up. Copy, paste. Okay. So for step number two, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this short-term trend. We're going to identify that it's also showing some weakness the last several days, as most everything I'm looking at is showing weakness the last several days. And we're going to identify that the short-term trend is in a bearish zone as well. So what do you guys think we're going to do? We're still going to look for short opportunities. It's still not a trigger. We haven't decided on an entry technique for the market yet. And we're still not allowed to go long. Okay. Now, in this particular case, as well as most of what I've been looking at for charts lately, everything is showing bearish and bearish. If they don't match, I'm not allowed to do anything, except for I'm allowed to do two things, really. I can either wait for another opportunity on the chart that I'm looking at, or I could go into the scanner uh, and use the Explorer to maybe find something that did have a match or did have something that matched up with what I was using. Okay, But in no particular case, if I show a long-term bullish, short-term bearish, am I ever going to do anything? I need the trends to match. And the way I explain this to people is, you know, we want, let's say we're headed into town, and we know that if we can wait till a lot of the lights go green. We're going to be a little bit efficient, a little bit more efficient about getting into town than if we wait uh, and we had to stop at every single light. Okay. Well, with the trends, we want to make sure that not only short term do we have a lot of weakness on a chart, we also want to make sure that long term we have a lot of weakness on a chart, and then we know we can take a short opportunity. Okay. Or we want to make sure they're both strong, and then we can take a long opportunity. Okay. Now let me look and see if we've got questions that have come here. Uh, webinars are always worse if you have laptop mobile data. I would agree with that. I too use a desktop, but reception is not good. Okay. Well, this is actually the first time I've done a dedicated overseas. Well, actually, no, that's not true. We do dedicated overseas webinars all the time. I'm sorry you can't hear me, but I will do my best to speak slowly and uh, loudly. All good in Chicago, Brian says. Okay, so let's go ahead uh, just to go back into the presentation for a second and just kind of recap what we've been. Again, we're just going to go through a couple of slides here. Again, if the primary trend is bullish and the short-term trend is bullish, you're allowed to buy. You're still not allowed to short. Still not a trigger. Okay, so what is a trigger? If they don't match, you're allowed to wait. That's what you're allowed to do. Or you can use a scanner to use for opportunities. Okay, But again, right now we've got very, very specific entry signals uh, in terms of what the rules are. And they're very, very easy to interpret. So what do we do to identify a trigger? Okay, Let's go back into Metastock. It's easier for me to show you. But in this step, we're going to spend most of our time in, in Metastock. We're going to identify those triggers. I'm going to show you how Rahul recommends you structure a trade, how you'd manage a stop on the way down or, uh, or an exit signal, and so what your risk and your reward is going to look like. Okay? So back into the Metastock program for just a second, or actually for a few minutes, and just one second while I drink some water. I think everyone as well, just uh, really taking into account, as, as Jeff goes through this, try and think about how you can take elements from okay. this and apply it into your own trading methodology. <laughs> like, I think there are some really key takeaways here. Like, we're talking about Rahul and how he's got very structured uh, rules about when he's getting in. He's defining a short-term trend. He's defining defining the longer term trend and now we're looking for the trigger as well so uh, I know Jeff will cover a few of the other important components before actually placing your trade for example money management and those types of things but the real key is to see how structured the trading approach is and uh, there are so many different ways and I think that's where a lot of people get lost in Metastock sometimes because there are so many different trading systems you need to find one that resonates with you all right, David, thank you. Um, and, and that's true, too. I mean, we, 
we uh, it, such so, the reason I like to show this system is this is so structured, and if you can manage your risk when you get into a trade, and you can manage what you're doing in a trade, uh, and you can have very very clearly defined rules as to why you would take that trade, well then you've you've it's always a matter of the disciplined traders are going to be the ones that do well. Um, there's a, a saying here in the industry, and it goes something like, there's old traders and there are bold traders, but there aren't any old, bold traders. So it's very, very much amount of the fact of the matter is trading is really not that sexy. It's really not that intense. It's a matter of using a lot of structure and a lot of discipline in what you do. And that's where Metastock can really help you when it comes to testing methodologies and seeing how well they would work and finding opportunities. And, uh, so let's go ahead and uh, go on with the rules a little bit, if you would. Okay. <clears throat> if I was looking at what stock are we on? Seven group holding today. I would, step number one, I'd, I'd know that we were in a bearish zone because it tells me right here it's in a bearish zone. I'd know I'm not allowed to go long, but I'm allowed to go short. Okay. Step number two, I'd look at the short-term indicator here. I would see that it's below zero, and I know that we are in a bearish zone short-term as well. I'd know that I was still allowed to go short. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's uh, let's get that back. How about now? Okay. Very good. <clears throat> it always helps to be able to see what I'm talking about. I will say that. Okay, so as I was saying, I know on seven group holdings right now, just because I'm looking at the chart, if I was looking at it from the, a very last day perspective, I'd look, number one, at the bearish zone. I'd look at the long-term RMO, and I'd say, okay, we're in a bearish zone because it's below zero. Or I'd look down here, and I'd say, oh, yeah, it's in a bearish zone because we're below zero. Okay. Number two, step two, is I would go ahead and look at the short-term trade. And I would see that that's also below zero. Okay, so I'd know if I get an, a signal to go in long or short, I can go ahead and take that signal. However, I'm not getting anything today, although I would probably be in a short trade already if I were trading seven and watching it on a daily basis. Let me show you why. Okay, so I'm going to narrow it down. We're going to pretend that the rest of this chart doesn't exist, and we're going to just focus on this sell signal. Okay. Now this was <clears throat> June 1st, so we're not talking about too long ago, maybe 14 days ago. <clears throat> we come in, we take a look at the chart, and we have a short-term bullishness, but long-term bear short-term bull bearishness, long-term bullishness. <clears throat> so we look at the chart, we know that we're allowed to wait. We're not going to take any actionable trade on that particular stock on this particular day to be very, very specific about the day I'm showing. I'm going to put a little blue land on there, okay? So come back in the day, ah, ne the next day, okay? Well, wait a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me step back two seconds and explain to you where these buy and sell signals are coming from, okay? So the indicator that we haven't discussed that's on the screen is the blue indicator right here, okay? And it's called, creatively enough, Swing Trade 3. Okay, and Rahu calls this his intermediate. So remember, we looked at the primary, which is longer term. We looked at the short term, which is shorter term. And now this is the one that would be kind of in the middle. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this one is basically just looking at the medium term strength of the chart. It doesn't need to be above or below zero to trade. What we're looking for is we're looking for short term to get more bearish than the medium term. In other words, if I change these both to a line, okay, I'm looking for the, the short-term trend traders to be less bullish or more bullish than the long-term traders. So the only thing we're going to actually use this for is when it crosses down below, we're going to assume that people that are shorter term looking at the market are more bearish, uh, and we're going to call that a change of strength. And when that happens, Meta stock is going to automatically put that buy and sell signal on the chart for you. Now, that is actually an actionable signal, but only as long as the short-term and long-term trend matches up. I hope that makes sense to everybody in the audience. So when we have this change of strength, we get the sell signal that coincides on Meta stock, 
And what we're going to do is, when that happens, we'll look at our long-term trend. In this case, it's bullish. And since we have a sell arrow, we're not going to do anything, okay? Except for wait, okay? So we wait one more day. Here we get into a bearish zone, okay? So we had a sell signal. In this case, it was yesterday because we're looking at a daily chart. And in this case, we can go ahead and structure a trade because we had the signal to go short. And then the next day we go into a bearish zone. Okay. Now I always get the question, well, why didn't you buy up? When, why didn't you go short? For example, right here. Okay. Why don't you go short right here? The price was higher there. You would have already made some more money. Why didn't you go ahead and place your trade right there? And the answer is pretty simple, and, and I'm going to be very, very blunt about what the answer is. It's not in the rules. We want to make sure that that trend is going in the direction in which we're trading. Okay, So we're going to wait until everything kind of matches up and gives us the thing. Robert Deal, who is a great speaker, somebody that I like to listen to a lot, has a saying. He says, bulls will win money, bears will win money, but pigs get slaughtered. You're never going to find and identify a methodology that works and gets you in at the exact top and the exact bottom. What I want you to be able to do in the Metastock software program is find a method that reliably gets you in winning, <coughs> in winning trades. Okay, And this is something that I found works very, very well for me. Okay, So let's go ahead and just keep talking <laughs> here a little bit. Right here we get our methodology to go short. This bar, this line, this bar, this day where I've got the vertical line on the chart is where I'm going to go ahead and place my signal. Okay. Now I want to do what we call a, a structure a trade. <clears throat> okay. And to structure a trade, what I'm going to do, this is the bar, remember, that I'm going to buy, or in this case go short on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my vertical, or my sorry, my horizontal line tool. I'm going to look at the low for the price activity for today. I'm going to look at the low for the price activity the day before. And I'm going to put a vertical line right below the lowest price. So in this case, here's my lowest price for those two days. I'm going to put my first line here. Okay. Now I'm going to put my second line above the high. So I look at the high for this bar. I look at the high for the bar before. I'm going to place my vertical line just a little bit above. Okay. Robert asks a question. I'm going to get to you in just a second. Okay. Uh, we'll kind of talk a little bit about that. And Robert, that's always the appropriate question to ask. What's your risk reward for this particular trade? What's your risk, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, just through the two lines on the chart, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically explain to you what we're going to do with them. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, at 8.25, or I'm sorry, 8.52 and some change, if the price goes below that tomorrow or the next day or the day after that, I'm going to go ahead and place a signal get short on this particular stock and uh, we'll immediately as close to that price as I can I'm gonna go ahead and get short on it okay and I get this question all the time people ask well wait a minute why would I wait if I think it's gonna go down and I think this the stock is gonna go down and it's weak and it's short term and long term weak and I'm pretty sure that it's going to go down. Why am I going to wait? Why wouldn't I get in just as soon as I can? The reason is very, very specific and very, very simple. This is a way Rahul uses in his trade to get an additional confirmation of the trend. Okay, You'll see right here, right before we had a bullish signal on a bullish day with a bullish bar. Okay, This might have saved us this particular trade, depending on where we drew that level. But what we want to see is we want to see an additional confirmation that the stock is going to start to go down. And that's why we wait to get short on it. Okay, Now what are we going to use this line here for, you guys? What do you think that line's for? That's the second line that's above our position. It's above what we feel is our support area or the last two days at price activity. What do you think we're going to use that for? Yep, that's right. Yeah, we're going to use it as a stop loss. Okay, so we've got 907 on that line. 
Okay, nine dollars seven cents and some change. I think it was eighty-two. Okay, so if I know approximately where I'm going to try and get in, okay, and it might gap below that, and we get in at a lower price than that, uh, or it might gap above, uh, and I know exactly or as close as I can approximate where I'm going to get out, and it might gap up above that price, and we might not get our entry exactly, we might not get our exit exactly. That happens. But if I know approximately where my entry is and where my exit, if this trade goes against me, then I have a good definition of risk, right? I know that right now, if I bought in at 8.52 and I get out at 9 because the trade goes against me, I'm going to risk at most 50 cents, OK? Uh, what if 50 cents is too much? If 50 cents is too much for you, then I would recommend you look at a different stock. Um, but in this case, it represents, let's see, if it was a, it represents a pretty small percentage on a $9 stock. 50 cents would be, uh, I guess it's getting too late for me to perform simple math in my head. <laughs> but it'd be a pretty small percentage of your overall kind of position that you're getting into. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll take that short position. We'd No, and this is a good question. This isn't, this is particular to this chart, actually. Um, but this is the way that we draw it in. Okay. Remember when we were looking at 852, we were looking at the low between the day where we're actually going to structure this trade and the low of the bar before. Okay. And I put it just below that price activity right here. Okay. Now, when I did the high, I did exactly the same thing, but I did it with the high of the, the, the bar I'm looking at for the entry in the bar before. Okay, That's actually one of two methods Rahul teaches. If you go through the recorded webinar that's up on our website, I'll, I'll show you where the link is in a few minutes. Um, but the other method he would use is if he wanted to give it a little bit more room, he'd go right above the recent support activity, which I would say right here is, is approximately where that is on the chart. I always stick with the same method, though, and that's looking at the high of the bar I'm getting in on and the bar before yeah, the and putting my stop just above uh, that price activity. That you guys can do, Did that answer your uh, question, David? Losses. I think the real key is just to make sure you find out what that previous support was, taking into consideration okay. the time frame in which you're trading. So one of the stops that we use and we find quite effective um, might be the count back line or something like that. And you might say, you know, in the last 12 days or 10 days, or it really depends on what time frame you're trading, what was the, the, the most recent high, and you count back. And then it effectively does the same thing. You're looking to find where that support is, and then you're setting your stop a few points above that. You know, just because oftentimes you see charts bounce around and hitting these support and resistance lines. So whatever way you use to calculate that doesn't really matter as long as you have a, a consistent way. And um, you should never, uh, one other thing that I like and I hear a lot when people start to talk about stops is they'll set stops up at prices that they can afford. And I will tell you this, the market itself does not care what you can afford to lose. Support and resistance has nothing to do with how much you can afford to lose on a particular trade. And you should never set a stop on what you can afford to lose. What you should do is you should step stops that are appropriate to kind of the markets you're following that are fairly easy to calculate and fairly easy to repeat. You should also do it looking at a lot of charting examples for things that you'd like to look at and do something that's very, very repeatable and not very subjective. Because as traders, when we go to take short positions, it's hard to separate ourselves from an emotional attachment to that stock going down and going in the direction that we want to. We want to keep this as simple and as, as objective, not subjective as possible. Very, very important well, to have repeatable uh, rules. Talk, Whether there are a mo or something uh, else, it's very, very important to, to have discipline. That, that one key thing as well, when it 
when talking okay. about how much you so obviously this food, was a successful trade that comes okay. down to your position sizing so you guys want to be making sure that you calculate your entries and exits so you know that your stop loss size you calculate out what your maximum risk is and then you make sure that you you divide that stop loss size into your maximum risk so that way you only purchase enough purchase enough shares or stocks or whatever the instrument is Oh, thank you. Thank you. I just looked at the time and realized I better go a little bit quicker. <laughs> so I'm uh, just loading in a little bit more data here. Um, uh, let me try here. I wanted to kind of, okay, this is this is good. Let me go ahead and just make a, a couple points here. and Because I do get a lot of people that just use RMO to determine that they're trading in the right direction of the trend. Okay. Since we have data... Um, on RMO, the price was 640, with the exception of just a few times right here where we had a severe drop in stock price. And right here at the very end of the chart, we've been bullish in that price. During that time frame, the stock has risen about $3. With a $10 stock, that would be 30%. So just by using that and trading in the direction of those trends, it's gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna argue, maybe successfully, maybe not, that it's going to be something that's going to be beneficial for you in terms of doing that trend. Now, there's a couple of other things that I want to make sure that I, I hit very, very clearly before we wrap tonight, and I don't have a lot of time. So let's go ahead. I want to make sure that you guys understand how to move your stops in conjunction with these things, okay? So let me go ahead and uh, zoom out. This is just as important. I kind of think based on... Now we're going to go back in time and kind of go through a trade all the way through, but I think it's important to be able to kind of rock in profits while you trade. And RMO has a mechanism built in and put into place. So I've gone back in time to, and we're just going to pretend that 10-21-2010 is the current day. We haven't gone through 2011 yet. <clears throat> the markets aren't trending down just yet. We're right in a place where we actually can kind of look at some trades historically and see how well they work. Okay, right now, if this is the 21st, I'm going to put my vertical line here, and we were looking to do an entry position. Okay, we get a buy signal. We look, we're in a bullish zone long term, we're in a bullish zone short term. We can go ahead and structure the trade. One of you asked, How would you structure a trade in the long position? This is how I do it. Number one, I'm going to take my horizontal line tool, and I'm going to look at the highest highest price point of that bar. I'm going to look at the highest price point before that. I'm going to put my stop, my entry order right there. Okay, I'm going to do the same, but now instead I'm looking at the lows. I'm identifying a stop. Now, this is the stop method that I use. If I was using Rahul's other method, I'd probably go right about right here, okay? But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to basically stay consistent with how I normally use this. So I'm going to go ahead and move this up, okay? Now, I know <clears throat> that if the price goes above 727.74, I'm going to type that in here real quick, 7.2774. And if it goes down below 7.10, then I'm going to go ahead and stop out, okay? Next day, we trigger into that trade. We go ahead and get in as close, and it looks like it actually opened right above that price point, so we probably would have gotten in right above that price point, but we would have went ahead and take, taken a long position, okay? Now, as long as it doesn't give us any signals, we're not gonna do anything, okay? So the rest of this chart that we can see, we don't do anything. We start to enjoy a nice little bit of a trend up, which is great. We're going to continue to kind of stay with that trend until we see something that we don't like. Okay, here we get a sell signal. Well, I don't like that. I want this stock to keep going up. Okay, when we get a sell signal, we want to do two things. Very, very simple. We want to keep an eye on this trend for a long-term trend. If that goes bearish, then we have a reason to worry. We want to take a look at our short-term trend. If that goes down below zero, which I'm going to change it back to the histogram here, if that goes down below zero, well, then we have a reason to worry. If you get a sell signal and both are showing bullish still, we're going to stay in that trade according to the way you're supposed to trade the RMO. Okay, So we're going to go ahead and stay in. It does pull back a bit in price, and here we get another long signal. Now, here's the trick question, and I've warned you it is a trick question. 
Right now we've got a long position on. We're making money with that long position. Uh, we get another signal to go long. What do you think we do with this particular long position? Okay, I got the two most popular answers, so we must have a very bright audience today. Uh, number one uh, is uh, add to your position, and that's a valuable way, a uh, technique to use, uh, but Rahul says that if you're trading RMO, you shouldn't be doing it. It's not part of the rules, so if that's something that you'd want to do, I would recommend that you play with that on paper for a, a while and make sure that it works well over time and is repeatable. Okay. The actual correct answer is we want to move up our stop loss. Okay, so what we're going to do is we we think that the stock is going to continue to climb up. We've made some money on the stock and we want to lock in some of that profit. So I'm going to take my horizontal line tool again. I'm going to look at the low on my price. I'm going to look at the low on the day before and I'm going to move my stop. Okay, I'm going to say okay now if it goes down to 8:13, I'm going to go ahead and get out. I'm going to lock in the profits that I've got, and at this point. I know that I've got at least a profit target. Unless this stock gaps down significantly, I'm going to make money on this trade. Okay. If you use Rahul's other method that he teaches uh, in, in the class that we've got recorded online, you might put your stop loss right here. Whatever you decide to do, just make sure you play with it a lot. Make sure you're comfortable with it and make sure it's something that is repeatable and not subjective. Okay. Let's go ahead and move that up a little bit. Again, I need to move a little quicker. Here we get another sell signal, okay? But again, we're still bullish and we're still bullish. Okay, here we get another buy signal, so we're gonna move up our stop for the purpose of going quicker. We're gonna move that stop to 844. Okay, here we get a sell signal, here we move up our stop. See, at this point, we're kinda in the market, we're fishing, we're making money, money's good. Here we stop out of the trade, okay? Now, again, we didn't get in the top, we didn't get in at the bottom. But we did manage our trade all the way up, okay? We did lock in our profits as we went up, and we actually had a very, very good trading example out of that, okay? Uh, we got in at 727. We ended up stopping out for a loss at 866. We're still bullish, which means if we got a signal to go long, we'd go ahead and take it. David, did you have something? I can hear your mic. Uh, I, I get out as soon as it, process, as it passes through. I'd actually have to go through Rahul's training method, but I think it's the same. If he doesn't wait to close below, <clears throat> he gets out, I believe. The way I trade it is I wait for it to go below as soon as it goes below. It doesn't have to close below. I just get out. I always get in again if we decide we don't like it or if we stopped out. We can always wait for another opportunity to re-enter. Personally, I get out as soon as it goes down below. <clears throat> Okay, quickly now, uh, let's just look at uh, ProShares Ultra. We won't have a time to do a trade-by-trade -trade analysis on this because I'm already over time. But uh, let's just take a look and eyeball it, if you would. Okay, so on this one, um, we had some period right here where we went sideways. We probably would have had a couple of losing trades. But again, this is a pretty good job of following the trend. Looking at it and just eyeballing it, I would say we probably get in somewhere right around here. It, historically, if we're looking back at this buy signal, probably get in somewhere right about here. Probably would have rode that, moved up our stop, moved up our stop, moved up our stop, stopped out, got in again, moved up our stop maybe. So I'd, I'd say that that looks very, very good. I would say that this is something that doesn't work on every trade, as you can see. Nothing works all the time, but this is a good way for us to be very, very objective about how we're trading. Let's look at 3M real quick. And I'm sorry, I wish I had a time to actually look at it in a little bit more detail. But I will show you very quickly how to uh, get a free trial if this is something that you like. Okay, let me go ahead and open this up for you. Okay, 3M may be a, an example of a stock that doesn't work very well. Um, usually when I pull up three or four stocks, one doesn't work very well. And that's just honest. <laughs> Not everything works all the time. I do see a good trade here that would have probably reversed or got out at a stop loss. Um, but I'm just not seeing this, this stock, 3M just probably wouldn't be the best example to show you guys. It might be the one that adds some integrity to the actual presentation. Uh, in other words, not every system works very well on everything all the time.
<clears throat> as a presenter, it's easy for me to go in and cherry pick a bunch of examples and say, yeah, look, this works so well on Apple the last couple, several years. In fact, it has. Or Google. It's easy for me to cherry pick things, but I like to be able to keep it real in so much that I show you the methodology, win or lose on the charts that you provide. And this would be an example of one that is a lose, I think. And if we sat down and went trade by trade, it would show you that. <clears throat> okay. So let's uh, just see. Robert asked a really good question, and I'm going to basically actually go back in here real quick. He asked about the exit swing signal, and I'm going to show you a couple of resources. Remember, I said a couple things a couple times during the presentation that we're just going to stay very myopic. I'm going to show you a system I like and I happen to use. Um, but what I want to show you now is kind of some of the places I do believe Metastock is a toolbox. I do believe that it'll make you money in the market. I do believe that um, the better you understand how the tool works and the better you implement it in your trading, the more it can be beneficial for you. So part of that is understanding how to use the tools and what's available in them. So I'm going to basically share my screen again. I'm going to share my Mozilla internet browser real quick. And while that's coming through, I'm just going to log up onto our site here. I want to show you some of the resources we've put together. These are all free. You can do them as a customer. You can, don't have to do them. You don't have to pay us anything to go through these. But they're all the training videos that we've managed to compile on our website over the last uh, several years. If you click on support here, right here we um, have some live help. They just closed down. They're opening up until about noon. Uh, in Sydney, uh, but if I click on online training, this is what I want to show you. So uh, again, it's important that you understand how to use your tools properly. It's uh, important to understand how, how to run scans, how to use what the tools are for and what they're doing. I'd recommend for anybody that might be interested in the RMO training a couple things. You'll see that there's a couple of videos right here that talk to you about RMO trading. One of them is done by Rahul, and I guarantee that he is a better teacher about how to do the, his methodology than I am. His class is only 20 minutes long, mine's over an hour, he does a better job. So I'd recommend that you go through through that this RMO training and the trading the RMO. I'd also recommend that you click on our recorded training here. We have a bunch of different videos on how to get you started, how to open up securities, how to use indicators. You'll notice that these videos are 14 to 20 minutes long. Nothing's very, very much longer than that. And we did that on purpose. We wanted to make sure that you could go. You didn't have to get a big old thing of a popcorn and a big old soda and pretend you're going to the movies. We want to be able to understand a concept, switch into Metastock and learn that concept and go to the next lesson when you're ready. Under here, under advanced, these are the ones that I'd recommend that you go through. I'd recommend that you go through the Explore uh, training module. It does a really good job of showing you how to use Metastock as a prospecting tool. In other words, if you want to trade a specific methodology, like RMO or like something else, it's going to allow you to show you how to set up the scan that you want to run. It's going to show you how to scan against Australia or Canada or US or Singapore. It's going to show you how to get that together so that you can use it as a tool that's going to go through the stocks for you so you're not looking at all of them. For example, in the US there's about 3,500 stocks that are optionable. That's my universe. It's very, very effective for me to say, hey, go look at all these stocks and just show me the ones I'm interested in instead of looking at 3,500. It's a very, very effective tool that will save you money and time and find opportunities and bring them back to you. Okay, uh, The expert advisor, I'd recommend you go through this one as well. It's going to show you how to go in and look at some of the other tools that are available. Okay, Now, I firmly believe that any tool that's going to help you in the marketplace should help you make money. Okay, I also firmly believe that it should also save you time. And that's the powerful thing about Metastock. Okay? We have such an ability to go in and save you time with computers and with automatic uh, analysis and scanning and those type of things. We do a customer survey once a year, and we say, how effective are you with the, the software that you use? And we allow people to answer, are you successful trading? Are you somewhat successful? Are you not successful? Or did you just lose your shirt? 85% of our customers say 
that they are at least somewhat successful when they trade. Okay, and I think that's a pretty powerful thing. I'll say it again. Almost nine out of 10, 85% of our customers, they say that they are at least somewhat successful trading or more. Okay. Now, if I was, I said earlier when I chatted about Singapore that I only take bets that I can put the odds in our favor, um, that is a bet I would take. Nine out of 10, I've taken that bet a lot, actually. I would recommend that you try it. Hopefully, this class was beneficial for you. Hopefully, you want to try out the can software. I I'm going to give you a very, very big I'd proposition. Know. Yeah, Again, I just we've been rated number one in our price about, category uh, 19 years in a row. Okay. Um, Again, I think the Meta stock program Metastock is going to be for successful for you in your trading. Um, I'm even willing to say if you want to try it, you can try it. That, um, go ahead. Out, they come and they go, um, and there are so many ahead, different David. packages out there that can maybe achieve what it is that you're looking for. But when I first started looking for a charting package, I wanted to find something, one, that had the runs on the board, two, that had a community that was actually supporting it. So when I had any questions or troubles, I could bounce things off the community. Um, and, and for me, really, it just needed to have uh, a few core elements. I know Metastock has a lot of bells and whistles, and that seems to be why some people, when they first get Metastock, might get a little bit overwhelmed because they're not too sure. It really can accommodate for a lot of different trading methods. But I, the things that you know I look for is, can it display charts easily? Am I able to load on indicators to the chart that I can very easily manipulate? Um, so when I'm, I'm viewing the chart, I can view it the way that I want. And then in addition to that, the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway for me is making sure that I can use it to somewhat automate my trading. I want to make sure that particularly with the explorer function that I can write a predefined set of criteria that I code into the software. The software scans all of my basket of securities looking for stocks exhibiting that criteria. Then I just eyeball those charts. Now, depending on what trading I'm doing, sometimes I will just use that scanning function to make sure that a basic set of underlining uh, criteria is there and then I look for a trigger over and above that. But sometimes I've also got other trading systems where I just program everything into Metastock and when I get that signal, I know that's the time for me to like enter. Uh, and then I just manage the trade as it goes. So I have to turn on my microphone again. Thanks, David. I, I appreciate that. And, uh, and uh, again, I've actually been selling Metastock for 13 or 14 years and using it myself. So I think it's a tremendously powerful program. Here's the best risk reward uh, thing that you're going to get all day. Metastock itself on a subscription basis would normally cost about $59 per month. On a real time basis, it would cost about $235 a month. It's a smarter option to purchase the software, and we'll go into that in a little bit of detail. But what I want to do is I want to say, put a challenge out there for you. Right now it's June 15th. I want you to go ahead and try out the software if you haven't already. I know a lot of you have. But if you sign up, uh, for a free trial of the software. It'll give you 30 days to evaluate the software completely risk-free. So not only am I telling you that the tools are going to work, they're going to help you be more effective. I'm going to say you don't even have to pay for them unless they are for you. Okay. There's one way that you can go ahead and do that. Um, what you'll want to do is there's an in-address address right here. It's metastock.com forward slash Jennings. And, uh, or you can give our sales folks a call. They're not open now, but they will be in our morning. It's right about 9 o'clock right here right now. But in the morning, you can call them up and ask any questions you have. wanted to let you know also, if you have questions, you can reach out to me. I'll answer them. My email address is jeffrey.gibby at reuters.com. Now, I would recommend that you sign up for the trial on a lease basis. Uh, it comes with data. Uh, the data is included as part of the lease price and as part of the free trial again I don't think that's the smartest way that you can buy the software but it is the most the best way you can try the software if after you when you try the software and after you decide that it's going to have a positive impact on your trading results it's uh, cheaper to buy the software our end of day software costs 500 bucks one time cost if you mention you're a, uh, a customer of Jennings uh, as part of this special webinar, when you buy the software, it'll be $449 for you. The reason that I'm setting you up for the trial is because I can give you a, a free trial on the subscription. With that being said, let's see if we have some uh, other questions. 
Nitesh is asking Ron Bird's question. Thank you. I like audience support. Uh, Vapil Kaji says Nifty Index has given a sell signal. Let's not get back into the software right now. Drop me a message. I'll send you a chart. I'll annotate it. I'll send you an example. Okay. I really like the idea as well. If everybody can just take what we've covered in this webinar and think about what it is that you need to start applying a successful strategy. You want to think about what that strategy is going to look like. See if you can find a system or a methodology that matches with you, something that you can believe in, and then make sure you find the tools to start executing it. A lot of people really get lost and stuck in uh, the search for that holy grail, jumping from one trading system to the next, to the next, to the next. Um, and very Absolutely. And one of the things that I love about Metastock so much is if, here in the U.S. you see all of these uh, software programs that come and go, uh, and a lot of them will really specialize on just one particular way to trade. There was one that was very, very popular here in the U.S. a, a few years ago that cost about $3,500. And as best as I could tell, the main function of that particular software package was a couple of moving averages. Uh, so. The thing that I like about Metastock is it is just so powerful. You can do so many things. It's it's a relatively low cost for 450 bucks. You can have a piece of software that's going to grow with you as a trader and it's adaptable and has the ability to do a lot of different trading methodologies and a lot of different trading ideas. And um, I've been lucky to be able to work for Metastock for as long as I have and represent a product that I just think is so phenomenal and affects traders in such a positive way. With that being said, and if David doesn't have anything else to add, thank you guys for coming. Thank you, David, for putting the webinar together. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, David is a, has been a great uh, supporter of Metastock over the years, and uh, we're, I'm really glad that he was able to help us do a webinar tonight.